Hello, welcome to another episode of the Gaming Podcast, episode 56. We got a good episode, and we got Steve Porter Bridges. What's going on here? Oh, what? hello. I, I hello figured I'd, I'd keep in the theme of the episode. I oh. mean, just a little tease what's, of what we're going what? to talk about this week, but... What's that? <laughs> uh, just another Kojima joint. One that I'm very excited for. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Surprise, you don't have... Photo, Steve photo mode bridges oh, or whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> it would be oh, damn, photo we shoot didn't event. think about that. <sighs> can we change it? We can change it, right? We can change it if you want. Yeah, okay. Do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> but how are you doing? You're, everything's good on your end. Welcome good. back. A little tie tie, but you know, otherwise, mm-hmm. things are very good. Things are going very smoothly. It's October. It's also, you know, spooky month, but I, I'm just discovering this game is just not, or a uh, month is nonstop with games it's and nuts I'm looking forward to it this like i have to pull, pull up the list again but it's nuts with games like i know dragon ball is out sonic is out call of duty's out unknown uh nine awakenings out as well like this dragon this, age dragon Diablo age at the end of Diablo expansion green world oh alan wake dlc alan wake we don't have yeah. we don't have we don't have a specific date as of yet, but I would assume it's when the physical comes out. That or the anniversary. I'm going to say one of the two. Yeah, yeah absolutely. When is the anniversary? I can't remember. It's like the 26th or something. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah it was right hey, before, before. As long I... as it's this month. That's all I care about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Riley, what's up with you? Not much. Got through the chaos of launching PlayStation 5 Pro. So How'd that go? Nice. Uh, and we sold <laughs> was it really that so, was it really that chaotic though? Because I feel like not many well, people were buying the pros. Well, I know the 30th well, anniversary. We sold, out. we sold out and then, but like the 30th anniversary stuff went live shortly after the pros went live. And I'm talking like minutes. So it was just like a lot. Like it's, uh, and I've done the like the next gen stuff, which is fine. But like that's two products per versus like six simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like I'm so many balls in the air trying to update people and keep all that going. So I think it worked out okay. But uh, balls. I again, yeah. Walmart Rally was, was the balls. Smoothest, That's what I heard. Yep. Walmart was the smoothest uh, checkout experience out of all of them. Like Best Buy was shit. Uh, Walmart, easy. Like hey, this, this, is a wa- this is a Walmart dedicated uh, show right here. I'm gonna right now. You know? Well, what, once they pay us, yeah. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, they're only oh, paying so one of us. Yeah, they're yeah, paying one of us. Cool. <laughs> so, do I not show this? No? Okay. No, right. no, no. I'm I'm gonna, gonna, cut that, cut that, cut no, that. No, you can't because it's all sold out now. So, yeah. It's, oh, well, you can start with the pro, I think. Screen, yeah. Just like a quarter of the screen right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Stranding, what's going on? Uh, you know, uh, hanging in there. I'm just confirming a lot of, uh, I'm going to be traveling a lot. Uh, it seems like in October. Uh, so like it all kind of came down within like the past, like two weeks or so. So content wise, you know, not really much going on, but, uh, like work wise, it's it's going pretty good. (laughs) There we go. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that's new in my world is that I got an Apple watch. I'm now in the Apple family. Nice. You got the new one? The yeah, the 10 feels good, you know, and uh, it's encouraged me to walk. And I'm like, no, I'm not walking. Screw you, watch. Yeah, yeah, I bought, I bought you. This week. I I'm bought you. the family as well this week, and I'm looking forward to it. Hell yeah. I'm still, it's, I'm, it's pretty neat. I'm still on the fence on, on getting a, 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 like, whether I try to be able to go for a 15 Pro or a 16 Pro Max. Uh, a well, like, 15 Pro is discontinued, is it not? No, but you can still be able to get it at, like, get it at this kind of price. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm yeah. just like, well, you know, if I'm going to spend a certain amount of money already on the pro, on the 15 Pro, and there's not really that much of a difference price wise, I'm like, I just might as well just go for the for the 16 Pro Max. So yeah. um, I'm you're just, pretty much getting the same thing. Yeah, well, except that, the, the camera little camera switch on, button. Yeah, yeah. Cool. You, know what, you know what? That's the thing is like, I'm due for an upgrade, and I'm like, I was holding out for the 16. Because mm-hmm. they're like, oh mm-hmm. man, like this, it's gonna be a, a bigger upgrade. Like, because I've got a twelve right now, so it's all pretty good. I have a twelve. I'm oh, on, yeah, no, I'm on a, a twelve as well. <laughs> so 
I'm like, cool, okay, I'll wait for the 16. And then the second the 16 drops, there are rumors about what the 17 is going to be. And I'm like, oh, like <laughs> there always is every year. It's, 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 it's every, you just, <laughs> that's a guarantee. You know, there's going to be a new iPhone every You're single like, year. The next so. one, oh, it's going to be a crazy upgrade. I'm like, oh, I'm like, yeah, know. you're going to add a third button, a fourth lens. You know? All right, question though, because Steve, you have the 16, right? I have the 15 Pro. Oh, you have the 15 Pro. Okay, okay. Because I've been yeah. kind of curious because I found out something today. Apparently, the cases that, that you could get for the 16, yeah, they're, they're making the 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 camera control button like really hard to be able to yeah. use. Yeah, there's <sighs> there's that, and now there's a software issue where if you hold the phone like anywhere near where the camera control button is, your screen just doesn't work. So, oh, weird. Uh, yeah, so? it's, just, it's just like a software issue uh, with something around like the camera control sensor they, they can pass that out easily but i'm just saying sure. like if you're if you're buying into either like the 16 just be a little aware there's some issues with it right now i mean really the, the only thing i really want it technically for is more of like apple intelligence because i've not gonna lie i kind of started using chat gpt a little bit lately and uh i kind of like it and i know it's going to be integrated as part of apple intelligence so I kind of want it, but I know it's not launched yet. So <laughs> I'm Apple, like, I can wait. Apple just said that they're they're diminishing their uh, partnership with OpenAI. Oh, are they? Really? Yeah, they, 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 they cut ties. <gasps> like, they why? Did that? Today, I'm pretty sure I just saw a, a report saying, like, yeah, they're they're not moving forward with their partnership with OpenAI. Why? Mm. Uh, that I do not uh, know for certain. Oh damn! Oh, but, okay. But um, other than that, I think that Apple or Apple Intelligence is pretty cool, just based off the stuff that I've been seeing and using uh, in like the, the the public betas and stuff like that. It's interesting. Yeah, I didn't want to go into the beta stuff because I'm like at least a generation behind. I'm on the I'm on the 14 Pro Max, and like I, I kind of want to see what it's like with the proper like 15 or at least a 16. Like because apparently, I guess that the Apple Intelligence is only going to be available on the 15 and 16 although there are some people that are like oh you can install on the 14 i'm like yeah because you could just install the beta and it's going to work but i'm just wondering if like the process the extra uh, processing power no it goes back it all the, the i don't Sorry. think it works on the 14 it's no it's it's supposed it's not supposed to but there's yeah. been a few like the uh, tiktoks i've been seeing of people like on 14 pro uh maxes and they've just been installing the 18 beta 18.1 beta and then they've been able to get apple intelligence to work got it, got it. but so um, that, it's not going to be recommended or not going to be actual working once apple releases apple intelligence like correct. officially correct. so yeah, okay cool yeah All right. i'm like eh, i don't know i'm still in the fence i don't know I'm, I'm i'm on a 12 pro max so i'm thinking about getting the 16 pro eventually just for like just for the camera and that will help out with content as well so especially with the 120 frames and <laughs> That too, yeah. Slow mode and B-roll and all that jazz, you know, so. Yeah, seems like it's going to be a good, like, content creation machine. And uh, if you're upgrading from a 12, well, 100% it's going to be. Yeah, that's going to be a good upgrade. Yeah, Yeah. I waited quite a while. I mean, it took me 10 years to get this thing. I'm like, oh, now it makes sense to get it. So, you know. (laughs) At least y'all didn't go with the 14. I can say that with all certainty. That was a garbage phone. (laughs) You know what? Hey, I've been on the 14 Pro Max, and that's actually been okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, battery life is not the greatest, um, like, after a while, but I'm already down to close to, like, 80% it's half, it's half battery capacity. But You guys should try the 12. That's where it's at. The, I My battery's still battery pretty battery. good with the 12, actually. My battery's still good. 12 Pro was great. I loved it. Yeah. That was the gen I, I skipped. I went from uh, 10 to 13, actually. So, so that was their first. 16, do I need the pro or the? Should I just go stand? Like, what do you guys think? I I would go pro at very least. Don't uh, yeah. you don't need to go unless pro you want max. the big unless you want the big screen. Like you could just go with the pro. Don't go plus. We go pro. Okay. Yeah, we go pro. We yeah. go pro here. Yeah, we're pros here. Okay. Uh, I would do pro you know max another... only just because I like the bigger screen. That's just <laughs> pro. You know who's another pro? Kojima. After all the highlights with Death Stranding, what the hell of a segue. Hell of a I, I was thank you so much. Guess. I was smooth. You know, I, I, was I was on the ball. I was on the ball. I'm getting to you. in the next subject. I would, right on the next, we're on the subject. I would give you two more points if you said Hideo Projima, but I'll give it to oh, you. Oh, my last, God. Well, I, need to, I need to figure out what the whole hoo-ha is. That's right. I'm using the word hoo-ha. And the, you know, the right person is here. The right person is here because... 
Death Stranding's own correspondent, Caboose is dialing in here. I should leave. Caboose, I should leave. What, what the <laughs> hell? Caboose what the right hell right is now. going on with Death Stranding 2? Why are people flipping out about this game? I don't understand. Oh, well, you know, it's because there's like a ton of hype that was created for these this brand new reveal, and it was just photo mode. <laughs> no, that's such, that's such slander. Such slander. Hey, hey, hey there was also a concert. We got, we got a yeah, concert. Training to live stream at Tokyo Game Show. There was a ton uh, of there was a ton a of uh, photos, uh, tall man though. dancing. <laughs> tall man dancing. There was actually quite a few cinematics that they put out, which was oh yeah, we got eight minutes oh. of the cinematics. Hell, hell yeah! I mean, at least they're what prepping was it? this. Rain drops or drop you on my head. You know that's also, they tag that. I, I, too. I I do want to know. <laughs> It, who in Caboose's circles w- was hyping this up? Because I feel like no one talked about this entire presentation oh. up until the Kojima tweets and I, Instagram. I just post. felt like the the that Kojima <laughs> saying he's going to have a live stream for this game at Tokyo Game Show post state of play was them saying, "All right, they saved all the stuff that they might have shown during that state of play for Tokyo Game Show now." And it's just like, that's it. Like, don't get me wrong beautiful looking game like visually uh, absolutely unbelievable yeah. like there when he took some of those photos from that awesome photo mode presentation Dude. um it looked like real life like it literally yeah. like you, you I, know I, I was incredible i was convinced that was behind the scenes stuff of like yeah. them doing like it was like mocap and stuff like that no, I, so like, too. I, yeah. looked, I was like oh wait this is in-game stuff this is no yeah. doubt and, and george miller is- crazy george miller's in the game which is yeah. awesome like hey, you all, can't, all, all is that, that stuff is, is that a heart man is that or no who is he Ta- tar <laughs> man tar 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 yeah, yeah, yeah 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 who's heart who's heart man the guy who did uh drive he's the producer for yeah. oh nicholas whining reffin yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. glasses yeah, no, <laughs> that's uh, hard. Uh, now he's got a new, uh, like, uh, like uh, 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 skeletal suit or whatever. Basically, exosuit? Can, yeah, exosuit. Right. When he passes out or when he dies, he basically just like collapses and, and he still keeps him standing. Uh, I love which was kind of cool. I was like, all right, okay, yeah, that's yeah. what the hell yeah. is this? Is this, I don't know. I feel like this man Do has you money really to blow. Even have to ask, I, I, I know, like, but I just feel like he has money to blow. This guy has two exclusive with and, two, with two companies. He has I money to blow. Like, that, like it, it's sweet. It's still such a travesty that this guy did not get to make Silent Hills. Like I would I have absolutely killed for yeah. that game, uh, especially like PT. To me, PT the demo is one of the best horror games yes. ever made. Yeah. Um, it's just so sad that he never got to make it. I mean, yeah, like I, I joke and all that. I'm obviously not the biggest fan of Death Stranding, but it's one of those things for me where You're it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter how much of a big like fan or not of Death Stranding I am. Like we all know and understand and admit that like Kojima is one of the greatest like auteurs in the gaming industry, right? Like he mm-hmm. absolutely has so like the, the, some of the best games ever made under his belt. Obviously, some of the most well written stuff, the most you know deep rich lore. Obviously, from the Metal Gear franchise, and now you know he's going all in on Death Stranding. I'll check out Death Stranding 2. Um, I'm definitely interested in the story because that was, for me, the strongest part of the first game. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, I really hope that this time around, <laughs> Kojima remembered to make, like, a fun video game. <laughs> like, yeah, true. I really I hope that in between those cutscenes, there's something engaging to play. I will admit that my, one of my favorite jokes Not is a- <laughs> like slight tension this week. Uh, 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 one of my favorite jokes that came out this week was because uh, the reviews of of Megalopolis have come out, and unless Mega someone Flopolis. said that, so, uh, Meg, uh, someone Mega said that Megalopolis is like what if Kojima directed a SimCity game or a SimCity movie, and I'm like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, it seems about right. All right. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, so I, I've actually just by happenstance gone back and started playing Death Stranding again, because uh, last week I just that. started getting the uh, the itch for it and everything. And one of the things that, like, everyone looking back in, like, 2019, when we saw all the trailers and everyone was like, this game makes no sense and everything, with I, just going back through it, within four or five hours, everything's explained to, like, such an understandable degree that I, I, like, now, contextually, I hear people say, like, oh, Death Stranding makes no sense. I'm like, but it completely does. Maybe and it I one think of those it's, games that benefits from the, the like, a second playthrough. 1,000%. Yeah. Because I feel yeah. like, especially going, like, doing the review period for that game and trying to get through it a lot, it was, like, overload in terms of just the gameplay the cinematics everything and you're kind of trying to digest it all but now going through it at like my own pace kind of more of like a relaxed thing 
uh, skipping a lot of like the tangential, like when you go into a base and you talk to the, the hologram people, I was like, okay, whatever. I don't really care about you, but like the actual cinematics I'm like locked in for. And I honestly feel like this death stranding, it has a more understandable lore and universe than even metal gear does. I think it's one of his better crafted stories just in terms of just it, it batshit crazy on surface level. But as soon as you take time to like go even like an inch deep, you're like, Oh, okay it starts to kind of all make sense. Yeah, and I yeah. feel like that's the same kind of pattern we're going in now where it's like, oh yeah, we got doll man here. We got tar man. We got a fucking ink cat over here. Tomorrow, man, none, of this, none of <laughs> this makes sense. Why do they all sound like contact. Mega Man bosses? Right. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. He loves uh, Die Hard Man, Death Man. He, 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 and then there's, need, to, then then there's tomorrow and rainy. I'm and like, rainy, like yep. who are these people? Yeah. Fragile's not wonder, that fragile, you know. Not anymore. <laughs> no, it's just fragile by name now. Wonder, um, <laughs> I mean, you kind of wonder, like, whether or not it, it makes more sense in Japanese than it does in English. Maybe, maybe I could see that. Yeah. Um. But again, like, yeah, like the, the story has never been for me the issue with these games, because like if if you're sitting down and you're watching like the 10 hour cutscene movie on YouTube, oh, my, you're going to your mind blowing yeah. stuff, right? Like mm. visuals, obviously the acting, all that stuff, the way it plays out. Beautiful, like amazing, amazing stuff. It's where Kojima is absolutely at his best. Um. It's just like part of what also makes the Metal Gear franchise so iconic beyond that deep, rich lore that you can sink your teeth into, it's that it's got this really engaging, super fun gameplay loop. The combat, the stealth, it's like the best you can experience in that genre, right? And so I feel like with Death Stranding, it just misses the mark for me when it comes to gameplay. Like, I totally understand that for some people it works, um, and, and for whatever reason, Camille will sing the praises of it, Till, till the end of time um but, but now she's not here to defend herself so i can just that's right that's I why we're doing this, right yeah. this is why um, we're doing a stranding episode today yeah but like i don't know i, I just hope that that gameplay wise that that we we bump it up a notch with death stranding I, I, i'm 100 there that. with you because again going back through it myself i do now fully understand like where things can be improved and think like there are a lot of holes in the game in terms of gameplay like if yeah. you're just mainlining the story it's actually a pretty great uh, use of the engine use of gameplay uh you just kind of have to get over the the systems of you're playing to the game's rules not not you're not able to do anything else except yeah play that to those greater rules. expression right and again that's what yeah. you, like even i watched like clips of, of metal gear solid 5 which i didn't love metal gear mm -hmm. solid 5 but i watched so many people like showcase some of their skills and like some of the unique things that you can do in that game yeah and i love that like creator expression that you get out of mm -hmm. it right like that level of freedom of every encounter I go into stealth or not, I can handle it differently every single time. And I love yep. that. Yeah. Are you playing the director's cut under curiosity or I am, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I decided yeah, I, I have to that game as well. So I think no one really believed that it was actually just going to be a, a delivery game. I think that's mm -hmm. where like people were like, no, there has to be more to this game than like this delivery yeah. game of FedEx, man. And future. my my hope is that maybe it was just kind of a product of getting into the Decima engine, not really fully understanding it and kind of just taking liberties in terms of, OK, well, we crafted this open world. We don't really know how to fill it out in terms of hitting our budgets, our, our release date schedule and stuff like that. Let's just kind of keep it a little more simple, kind of execute less on the combat because there are, you know, stealth systems in, in the game as, and as well as, you know, traditional combat. But it's just few and far between in terms of like an, uh, an engaging gameplay loop. So hopefully with all this extra time, all these assets already made, they can kind of just build out a more full and engaging uh, world to kind of explore. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. it's still using the Decima engine, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that now that's like they've, he finally has been able to like experiment with it and he's able to at least be able to add more stuff in like as, as, as that he wants the only thing is though is that kojima likes to be able to add a ton of like fun little like mini systems in the, upon systems and awesome. he like and, and that's the thing that i'm kind of concerned about because i'm like when, when, when you play death stranding like when you get that it's a it's a package de like delivery like si like walking simulator i'm like okay <laughs> i get it for that but you're right. It's like when you start kind of adding more on top of it, it just it it's like it's kind of like that mile like mile wide and only an inch deep sort of deal. There's yep. not much to it from there. But I mean, 
it is using the same like yeah the decimal engine which is the same engine that horizon uses um uh so there's there's definitely like the ability to be able to do really good combat in there it just i yes uh, we'll see how he's and, uh, and able to there do is it. a game that horizon's complete opposite for me for something like death training story eh, you know what i mean like the lore is interesting not mm-hmm. really into the story but the gameplay oh my goodness mm-hmm. that i actually hadn't played horizon for the longest time i finally got into forbidden west this year like first of all one of the most visually beautiful games ever like uh, mm-hmm. unbelievable like there it, it's one of those games where legit like it is it is the mcdonald's ad but actually you know what i mean like when you order the food it's like, Mac. wait yeah. it looks like that for real um and then also burning shores um that's got to be like standard now for yeah. expansions because mm-hmm. in terms of the length the scale i liked the story actually more in burning shores than i did in the base game and sam the Horace Woodward, boss the fight? Villain, oh yeah. my god the horse was so sick that was awesome i love that game so welcome yes you're to, right. uh welcome to herman holst's playstation now yes uh, Caboose, you, <laughs> you, join the call he welcomes you with open arms <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So you want the same treatment for Spider-Man, then, I assume, right? I would love for there to be the same treatment for Spider-Man, yes. Just put if, some, like, robot dinosaurs in there, and you're all good. You know what? Yeah. Smythe, he's a villain that yeah, has some robot yeah, stuff, so true. he gets to make it work. Yeah. Switch over to the Tess Mansion. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Oh, Crazy. The, Crazy. the other Crazy. thing I wanted to say about Death Stranding because now I'm yeah. going back or to... Any, the by the way, also anything but about Tokyo Game Show as well. Like, it was yeah. just a general thing, so... Mm. Uh, I I wanted to bring up uh, that I'm a little afraid about Death Stranding 2 only because Death Stranding 1 was so predictive about COVID. Now I'm scared what Kojima's going to do. Yeah, what's he going to do next? Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my what? goodness. What is he going to predict? It is like yeah. a nuclear holocaust, what, what have you. I'm, I'm terrified now. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wild. Was there anything I mean, from probably a more, uh, There's probably going to be, you could be able to give more likes to, to ladders and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that. That's wild. Uh, you, know, you know what I saw at Tokyo Game Show? Yeah. I saw on display the 30th anniversary PlayStation 5 Pro bundle that we only had 150 of sold here in Canada. And then Damn. I was sad that nobody here was able to get one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, not for a lack of trying, I though. So I yeah, so yeah, 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 okay, Marcel, the reactions that ju- we just saw around that, that's got to be the screenshot. That's the screenshot right podcast. there. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> 20, 22 minutes in. You're like, like, you're like that. crying yeah. face or something. Oh my god. Yeah. Damn. It was yeah. it was sad seeing the whole like commentary on in the Discord being like, hey, you dry here yet? Nothing? No, it was game day that morning. Game day was game day. I was locked in. You know, like, you're, you're ready to draft some teammates for your team, you know. It was wild, you know. But uh yep. for me, uh one thing that did stand out, and I know I talked about it uh, when we all hung out uh, last week was uh Thread of Time, like the 2D um fantasy uh like a chrono chrono trigger style of game made mm. by some canadian developers up actually by... toronto developers yeah toronto awesome. developers not yep. not too far from us some north yorkers i may even say as well I even go mm-hmm. i'll go that close that's how close they are um looks that's really good i was showing them. yeah <laughs> it's just i'm not gonna talk... <laughs> i'm not gonna talk like good luck fighting where north york is all right um <laughs> even <laughs> no. i don't even know <laughs> and i think but I like uh <laughs> but uh but you know also, uh, it was shown at the Xbox show. That was probably the reason that really highlighted for me. Besides that, I didn't really see anything major from Tokyo Game Show. I don't know. Like, Square well, Enix. Well, it was the Final support, Fantasy Pixel Xbox. Remaster. Yeah. Um, but yeah. they did say yeah. it was kind of deceptive because it sort of it, it, the announcement sort of made it seem like it was going to be coming to Game Pass. But no, that's like you have to purchase those uh, separately. Uh, and it's not going to be. Those are not going to be on Game Pass, which I was like, oh, weird. Okay. Some of the mana games came to Game Pass, though. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah, I was kind of surprised as how eh, Tokyo Game Show was. Like, it was first of all, it was hard to find any feeds of anything of uh, for like majority of the shows I found this time <laughs> around. But uh, yeah, yeah, there was, wasn't there wasn't much announced like big big announcements. I think because like like last year. Last year, wasn't it like for Xbox? It was like Final Fantasy fourteen coming to coming to Xbox. Like I think that that was. I think so. Was yeah. it? Not? Yeah. Yeah. I was like their big. Had like one. had like a presentation. Like they were on stage with them. I think as well, right? Yeah. Like they're yeah. I think Phil. I, you know what? Uh, though? Is, uh, uh, I, or, yeah. I, I wonder just how much of a bigger show would have been, or just at least how much more we would have had to talk about if it weren't for Ubisoft, like True. pulling out, right? Like they would probably ended up showing some more 
for shadows and there's like a ton of info out there now about what's going on but well, we could dive into that next because uh i do that is one of our topics uh here is it? As well. oh, okay okay yeah, yeah about I mean, the state of uh of good old uh ubi you know you know um where's the begin here insider gaming here mentioned that uh, star wars outlaws only sold one million copies um, I can't imagine how much this game even costs. First of all, the budget of games is outrageous. Like Spider-Man yeah, was what, I mean, yeah. 120? And like Spider-Man 1 was Something 90 like million? That. How is it more yeah. than three times? Like that's that's, that's crazy. It, it's it's got to be, I mean, especially with the next-gen consoles, right? It's just got to have something to do with that. And then I think well, someone just... I think someone wants a yacht. I think a couple <laughs> of yachts were thrown in there. Because <laughs> something that, doesn't sure. add up, man. Something for doesn't sure. add up um but i but i think I especially know. like the, the 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 amount of talent behind the scenes that's working on these games included as well like the amount of outsourcing that they end up doing um there is the and the games are just bigger they're, they're bigger they cost more they they they're on like more expensive tech um but yeah i mean the state of ubisoft it's rough like like you said i think from yeah. that insider gaming article star wars outlaws sold just a million copies um, and, uh, which is... Yeah, about about thirty days, and uh, and also with the uh, and sorry to cut you off, but the, the yeah, whole yeah. Uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows as well, uh, they pulled out. They're not changing. There has another report that come out. They're not changing the character Yusuke, but they're gonna. Apparently, they need like the people who came in, the historical people that come in to like make sure every make sure everything's good and everything like that. Yeah. They didn't come in like till like halfway through. So a lot of like a lot of, a lot of stuff was like cut short corners, and I think just after years of Ubisoft doing like sadly doing this thing multiple times it, it's not all, like catching up to them you know well yeah. you know we, we saw the signs a little while back that like assassin's creed is supposed to be this triple a title right it's supposed to be a triple a franchise releasing them every year or every other year is just not sustainable you know like and, it, and it leads to unfinished product almost every single time and the fact that they've they've always prided themselves on how as close as like historically accurate as you can be able to get for yes. like a game that basically talks about it, like an, a fake assassin uh, right. and, and Templar sort of uh, sort of uh, sort of fantasy kind of game, but they've always prided themselves on how accurate at least that the world that they're creating uh, is in. Um, yes, the characters that you're playing are not necessarily historically accurate, but you are kind of getting it. Like it, we, like when you know when you jump into like uh, uh, like it's assassin's creed odyssey you know you're gonna get like a pretty good uh, ancient greece uh sort of uh looking like a, uh, a mean, historically accurate game but so it's just it's interesting that as you said marcel like it's like them cutting corners and not doing the proper research i think it's like honestly it's just more of a of a of it's more of a reflection on the leadership than necessarily the team themselves because yeah. the team that works at Ubisoft are fantastic at what they do i mean yep. like it was at, honestly like when you said the million copies sold for star wars outlaws it should have been more than that it 1000 percent should have been more yeah. than that there is a really good game in there and i would think that any of the major gripes that people would have about the game are decisions that were made but that would have been made by leadership not by the developers themselves or the teams themselves yes it's some blame can be kind of moved around and it's a little bit of a gray area but Ubisoft has always had that problem. They've always had an like a, a, a leadership problem that they think they know what they're doing. They like uh, they intimidate. That there's been reports of intimidation, uh, of abuse, and like like it just both mental and sexual abuse. Like it just and physical sometimes. And you're not even allowed to voice your opinion as well. They feel like exactly. hey, this is not going to work with the game. They're like, well, that's too bad. We're going that direction anyway. Yeah. And then you have a CEO that essentially either ignores it all or just uh, like does it, like stands with the, his leadership uh, and, and and basically kind of doubles down on it and no one never leaves as far as we know. So and like, didn't he like say like, hey, Star Wars was an outstanding game and like it's when the with critics of seven out of ten and like yeah. this is and like, I'm like, well, seven out of ten, like, yeah, that is a good score. But like clearly the game had problems as well. Like he just chose to. Like he's not aware of what's going. Like, is he not aware of what's going on? Ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 it, again. I think I talked about it last week. Like, this is this is like reminiscent of when Ubisoft was like in danger of getting a uh, hostile takeover. It's 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 get it's bad. It's yeah, getting bad, it's and I feel it. bad for every single team that every single studio that 
is going to be like is affected by this uh because it's not their fault it it's it's leadership's fault at the end of the day the developers are just doing their job job. right like you're instructed to do this that or the other and that's what you do right like you're not you're not making the higher up decisions and those higher up decisions sometimes are what lead to these unfinished products or like you know a, a game like star wars outlaws probably needed that same delay that assassin's creed is getting right now you know like something at the last minute get that more polish added in there um to, to get out the like, door and- definitely 100 percent, especially with like they're bringing out stuff where like oh you can now save your data or the ps5 corruption like uh save data where oh they my god all that, that, stuff. that was a huge hit that was yeah. I, a lot of people underestimate how bad that was i mean or the you're, stealth you're paying, from a stealth company like the cell was even halfway you're paying big. from from the, the you're paying for the early access for this game yeah. an, an extra like 30 dollars or whatever and your save data is getting corrupted playing this game early and you have to start from the beginning there's some mm. people i imagine who get this day one maybe if you're the biggest star wars fan on the planet or something and you're gonna marathon it and all that progress is lost for whatever reason. I mean, yeah, that that's that was a huge hit. It's really rough. It's rough to see kind of the the position that Ubisoft is in because when you thir- when you heard of a, a Ubisoft game from back in the day, it was usually something to get excited for. Yeah. And granted, when I see something like Assassin's Creed Shadow, from what I'm seeing, I am relatively excited, right? Like I hope that they that they hit the mark on that. Star Wars Outlaws yeah. when we were originally getting those the the first bits of a uh, of like content from that game. I was looking forward to the product, but it's always now like cautiously optimistic at most. You know what I mean? Like, well, I think be careful. I think, I think to your point, Caboose, there's there's always a consistent barometer with Ubisoft games. And back in the day, back in like I would say around the Black Flag area, yes, that was it was so high. Like you know exactly what you were getting. But now tick after tick after tick after every little you know couple of years, that barometer keeps going lower and lower. Yeah, and unfortunately over the course of this past calendar year, maybe like eight months or so, Ubisoft has gotten themselves in a very precarious position where they are licensing games with Disney. And we know from the Insomniac League, Disney doesn't fuck around with how much they're they're expecting on a, on a payout from, from some of these games. And yeah. if you have Avatar and Star Wars coming out and just not performing at all, Assassin's Creed Shadow has to be your big, big, uh, it's big your flagship. Game. Yeah, yeah, because right now Ubisoft pay is back. operating <laughs> on an unprecedented amount. They they they're not sustainable anymore. I was just looking Ooh, it up. Yeah. Twenty one thousand employees. Yeah, yeah, it's bigger than PlayStation. This, it's one of the few. This is a, this is a it's publisher one of the few companies. Out. It's one of the few companies that they have. Like it's it's what they call kind of like the twenty four hour uh, workday, where mm-hmm. they have studios all around the world yep. that it's designed so that when one studio who's working on a game uh, it like ends their workday, the next studio uh, in starting. whatever time zone is just starting their workday, yeah. and that I mean that in of itself it can keep them going with like a yearly releases uh, of of larger games. But uh, I, I think that obviously there's there's something to be said about having multiple studios on 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 one game, uh, and it's there's not a cohe like not to say there's, I don't know I was about to say you don't have no a, a collective vision right like you don't yeah. have like the the guy who's steering the ship to say this is what we want this game to be like yeah. if if he's going to bed and the other guys are still working on it. He can't direct them or say, you know what, like that's not working or or, or let's shift focus to this or something like that, right? Well, like- it blew my mind that start going back to Star Wars. Star Wars Outlaws mm-hmm. was a Ubisoft massive title and mm-hmm. the narrative director was working in Ubisoft Toronto. Yeah. Like how how does that happen? How does the yeah, actually not happen? just the narrative director, the entire narrative team? Uh, well, well, that's was what I'm saying. Toronto. Like, yeah, the audio, uh, a lot of the audio work, work was from Ubisoft Montreal. How does all this happen in a sustainable way in 2024 when games are yeah. exorbitant and take so much time, so many assets, so many hands on? Like Ubisoft is just operating on a, on a field that I just don't think can work anymore and they're that's... also and they're also in the middle of a a bit of a shift in in strategy wise because they were going for the live service games like they were absolutely yeah. like they were kind of like one skull of the, and the bones. First, it's skull and bones i mean you also got <laughs> Rainbow six you got x defiant even had what was the canceled br hey, that hey, that's had? a good game Hyperscape. Fantastic, fantastic. Hyperscape, oh my God, Hyperscape. yeah Hyperscape. but Hyperscape. it doesn't mean expectations right like um yeah. there was also what yeah. was that uh the, the rainbow six, like, um, spin off 
all that. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, was, there was, Did they have like Battle Court? The, what, what's the roller the roller sk- skating one they had as well? Uh oh, shoot! Yeah, it's like roller, not roller dome. That's a movie. Um, but uh, I, I, I know exactly. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I can't one, remember. It was like an extraction shooter for Rainbow Six, but it was like it, it was like a like it was almost like a zombie out quarantine. Album. Quarantine. That's it. Yeah, who would play? Whoever plays that anymore? Like, why it just, don't we have a Division Three? Oh, because they wanted to make Division Online. Yeah, yeah and then it. it got canceled. And then yeah. Division Heartland, wherever that is, but, but, but wasn't uh, Division that, Two that was the, like that Division was Heartland one. was the one that got canceled. That was the well, no, that one was yeah. that one was always going to be like a kind of a one sh- like a one like a like a uh, sort of a like a spin-off. DLC type game, like a spin off. Yeah. Like okay, it wasn't but... going to meant to be Division Three, um, but yeah, that's but it's... kind of gone. But and then and then they focus on you know putting Splinter Cell into every other like smaller franchise that they got and then like not Valhalla. make Splinter Cell, <laughs> and then never makes. Now we do know they are making. One though, yes, they're oh, making a remake. Yeah. I'll, they're be, saying, I'll be in a coffin by hand. Hopefully, for years. Uh, well, when it's ready, maybe I hope. Hope uh, hopefully, all of this a is a remake. lesson. It's to announce it when it's remake for show it when it's ready. I mean, the initial announcement was more of like a they were for hiring rate. up to begin production on it, right? Yeah, like they're making it. So hopefully, next year we see it or Game Awards, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't well, know. I'm getting an animated series first before we're going to get an actual game. Riley, I don't know. I wish I knew. Well, like, I'd even like, be talking about it if I knew, to be honest. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I know. Wink, how, how wink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, even with like, like a disaster with Prince of Persia, like the remake of it side of things, like yeah. they had to cancel the remake. And then like, what the hell is going on with Beyond Good and Evil? What's going on with that game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that disaster. Like, what is going on with that disaster of a game? Like, Joseph Gordon Levitt killed it. Uh, that, that was <laughs> years <laughs> ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I know. I mean, they were still doing presentations say, at, at uh, like the e, like was like an E three announcement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, you know the sad weird thing is that, is like, that once again we're we're in a position where Ubisoft is just banking on so many of these IPs on so many of these yeah. games and taking way too long with them because I mean I'm I'm Splinter Cell stand number one but by the time yeah. we get whatever their vision of Splinter Cell is is that even going to resonate with me because it's been worked on for X amount of years same thing with Beyond Good and Evil two that was great back in you know 2016 when they announced it cool maybe I'm into that but by the time it comes out in 2032. I doubt anyone anyone growing up cares about Beyond Good and Evil too. It's just like, us. Just like, and, and you know what? <laughs> you, know what you know what works <laughs> so well. <laughs> you, you know what works so well for the Resident Evil franchise is you'll get like Resident Evil Two remake, Resident Evil yes. Three remake, but then you'll get Resident Evil Seven, yeah. Resident 100%. Evil Eight, right? Yep, yep. Splinter Cell. As far as we know right now, the new Splinter Cell they're working on is a remake. It's yep. not like it's not I mean, it, it'll it'll be, I guess, a new game. But it's not like a new Splinter Cell like story. It, it's right. going to be like just a, a, a remade version of the Splinter Cell that people knew and love from back in the day. But like, are they working on an actual follow up to Splinter Cell? Like, are we going to get another Ghost Recon that's not just all about John Bernthal or something like that? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like what, what, what's would well, they have these massive IPs that have been successful in the past, and it feels like. The only thing that they keep coming back to is Assassin's Creed. But again, releasing Assassin's Creed every two years and then having like a smaller scale Assassin's Creed, like what they try to do with Mirage, it's it's not sustainable. It, it, you just can't make games at that level with the frequency that they want. You know what I mean? Like yeah. these things need time. And so why aren't we focusing on all these other major IPs that Ubisoft has under their umbrella it's yeah. it's i don't know it's crazy to me and then obviously like you said collaborating with lucasfilm getting to make a star, a star wars game that just should have been such an easy sell like we're making mm-hmm. an open world star wars game like you really should only be able to go up from there well um, this was supposed to be like ubisoft's year like we it, yeah they launched with Pr- prince of persia lost crown they right. were they were going to have x defiant going into the summer they have star wars outlaws and assassin's creed shadows like they would that yeah. was going to be a really this was 2024 is supposed to be a really good year for ubisoft and is it weird to say that basically the only hit that they've had is prince of persia 
uh, which yeah. is kind of technically a more of a smaller project in comparison to the others. Yeah. And that's say, that's saying like, because here's the thing: Star Wars Outlaws is one of my favorite games of this year, like 100. percent And it's not because I'm that I, that I'm in it. I'm like I have to clarify that I do like the game a lot, and I think it definitely is. A, I just a love really, all the really scenes with Jabba in it. It is the <laughs> best scene. <laughs> <Sure. you know? laughs> but no, but honestly, it's like it. it, it I think again, kind of going into it, I think a lot of the uh, the weird decisions that we see that that are that have been happening with Ubisoft, it really just comes down to it's just like kind of bad leadership, or, or at That's least a, just yeah, people yeah. that yeah. think yeah. they know what they're doing and they like and no one's there to check them on it. Uh, because there's no, like, people at the higher ups just only want one thing, and that's just basically just to, to have to keep making money. I, I think it's kind of funny as well. Like I remember when we were hearing about Star Wars, and then when we first saw Assassin's Creed Shadows, that we were kind of surprised to see Assassin's Creed Shadows being announced for November. We thought that was going to be just like Star Wars. Like there's there's no way they're going to put these two big games head to head, and like now they're paying the now they're paying the price for it. And like you can't. This is something that people wanted for so long. Uh, Assassin's Creed in Japan, and you mm-hmm. can't. This is something you you can't rush, especially with a, a a country that is very big on like on their culture on their culture as well. And you uh, you you're like, oh, we'll just bring in someone halfway in. Like what? Like what's going on here? Like I, you spend. All, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I don't understand how you screw that up. I I think a lot of it goes back to Steve. What you're exactly saying is that I think Ubisoft sets them up in almost to such a successful degree where it is, yeah, we're coming out in this calendar year with four games. Like, I'll never forget the year that they had uh, Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion, and then um, Immortals right after. And it was like three months of Ubisoft games where even I was like, I I don't want to play these games anymore. These are way too long. They're just way too much of the Ubisoft style. And I do wonder if that is another thing that contributes to this where people are looking at star wars outlaws and assassin's creed and they're like well i know assassin's creed i wanted this japan uh you know feudal japan style game i'm gonna hold out for this one and just star wars i'll get uh in the holidays when it inevitably goes down to 20 dollars and i'll pick it up in yeah there, there is I definitely there's sorry to cut you off riley but there is definitely sorry. like a feeling of like them cannibalizing the <laughs> Did you, what did you say? I said so rude. Oh, <laughs> You're making me mad again. Um, okay, I'm pissed off. <laughs> I thought I heard that. I was like, oh, my God. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, it really does feel like they're cannibalizing themselves. So, like, I mean, thankfully, they've delayed Assassin's Creed, right? Yeah. But let's say mm-hmm. we lived in a world where it didn't get delayed. And then in that same world, Star Wars Outlaws was massive. They want that game. Like, you got to let that game breathe, right? You got to let yeah. those copies get off the shelves before you're putting up another ubisoft game and like they're putting like they're against monster hunter and something else is coming out that day as well oh like, my god yeah they're, they're they shot oh, themselves about, about, about as, about as well the same time. sorry riley yeah. what were you gonna say before i rudely interrupted you yeah, I was insane. Um, I... <laughs> all right, here no, we go. Let's just... all listen to what Riley I was just to say, everybody. Try to stay actually, away. Riley, Riley, just one second. Oh, Riley, wow. actually, uh, this, um, one second, Riley. Uh, I'm just going. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going like, to cut just to an ad or something. Get in there. Yeah, yeah, imagine. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> Got to go throw in a, a Walmart ad. One second here. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, no, I was just going to say that, like, I mean, it's very clear to me that, that something is, I mean, well, I don't even know what the stock's at now, but it was like 10% of what mm-hmm. it was a year ago or something yeah. at one point, yeah. um, which is bad, bad. Like that, yeah. it is bad, bad. So these sorts of things, and it seems clear that they have almost have like a conveyor belt kind of wheeling these things out and just keeps going and going until it's done. And then they just drop it. Like, it doesn't seem like they're being overly mindful. I'm sure they're, they're doing some pra- like insight into it. And there's like some study, but overly mindful about when to release these things outside of just like get it out for holiday so it's like these things like especially with these license titles like you can't just drop it and especially with star wars like when you do that it, it released to 76 or 7.6 metacritic or something like that which mm, is yeah. like not great and 5.4 user so it's like none of that is positive buzz it's okay buzz but like like it's like okay well i'll wait till it's 20 bucks or i'll wait till it's 30 bucks or you know like Mm -hmm. they're not doing themselves any favors by by you know pursuing that that just like conveyor belt release schedule and just dropping it for holiday like they need to be a bit more mindful of what they're doing they're they're just not 
they're just not nimble enough to build to 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 be able to make course corrections. I mean, just look at the basically like I always kind of compare, uh, like uh, usually around like whatever like E three Summer Game Fest, whatever like all the different showcases. Ubisoft is still on the same playbook that they've been playing on for like the past like five years before the pandemic, like because it worked for them at that time. Like it was like still doing the the live in person thing, and there's not really much to announce. But you got like a it's basically a lot of and this honestly, I think this kind of summarizes pretty much everything about Ubisoft right now is that it's all spectacle, no substance. Um, it, it's it's a, it's a lot of like flash in the pants. Like it's cool ideas. It's cool to see like Ubisoft massive hit coming off their hit, like division two to be able to create a star Wars open world game. A, th a thing that we've not had at all. We've never had an open world star Wars game ever. And Ubisoft is the, is the king of open worlds. So let's like, it makes sense that of course they would have a really good game under their belt, but it didn't really have a lot, a lot of substance there. Same with avatar. They basically like create this under this this franchise by James Cramon, Cameron that has it's it's the, the number one at the box office. It's it, and it's you think it'd be cool to be able to create an open world of like a Pandora with Ubisoft, but they basically just launched with kind of no fanfare. It kind of was mm -hmm. put in December with no no one really cares. It's just there's a lot of like excitement for certain things, and it's like it, 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 like it's like oh yeah, this makes sense for Ubisoft, but. They never seem to. They never seem to deliver because they're I using totally the same old about that Avatar game. <laughs> yeah, so uh, and that's people. sad. And that's sad because, like you said, yeah, James Cameron's got like such a vision for that franchise. Mm -hmm. So it was. It must have been a lot for him to hand over the reins to to Ubisoft and say, "Hey, like expand upon this lore with this game." Yeah. Yeah, and like must have been some pitch deck. <laughs> I know, seriously, and and yeah, like it, it just it's a resounding meh around that game, right? And like yeah, same thing with Star Wars, like you said, Riley, like a seventy six on Metacritic. I mean, that's not terrible by any means, um, but like a game like that needs to be that eighty plus. Like this was good, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. this is you spend your money on this one, you know. I mean, it's the same with like the, the entire industry right now. Honestly, like oh, yeah. if, you, if you're oh, not yeah. an eight, it's, nine, it's and a exclusive. ten, you're like you're and you're nothing. Like you're basically yeah. like if you're not low, if you're not above an eight, you you're basically a failure. And uh, there's no real no point to play. It's so funny because a seventy six on Metacritic from the critics ends up being a five from the users. That's you know it. what I mean? Yeah, like exactly. because because a lot of people see that like seven out of ten, and for them they're like, well, it's bad, so uh, I'm gonna play it, and it's probably gonna be bad. You know what I mean? Like. People are already setting themselves up for that expectation. It's a whole talk about just, again, discourse in video games and stuff. I don't want to get into all that again. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah to, to, to wrap it all up, to, I totally agree with what everybody's saying. Definitely what you're saying, Steve Saylor, about, like, what it yeah. really comes down to is leadership. Like, a lot of these, these poor decisions, a lot of these games coming out in the shape that they are isn't up to, like, a QA analyst, right? Like, it isn't up to the person just designing these characters or, or, or yeah. creating concept art right like it all usually falls in the lap of leadership yeah and like you know if they need time to do things properly take the time to do things properly get like this is like this is classic like you're rushing your homework and you're like well why did i get a 56 what the hell is going on here the problem is is that they're <laughs> stuck under having to be able to make a profit under their like every single fiscal and uh and it's just it just doesn't uh, doesn't work work out that way. And and as we're seeing, like it's taking longer and longer to be able to create games, and it's getting more and more expensive. And uh, a company like Ubisoft, it's uh, like basically, I think it, the the world of the third the larger third party uh, publishers um, or like or developers are, are kind of going like going away. I mean, the only thing that's saving EA right now is their sports franchises because that's what they, that's what they're known for. Rocks like uh, Rockstar is like they're Rockstar. Like, they're, they're, like they're, as far as we know, I don't think that they are they're literally if, either too big to fail or if GTA just, Six wasn't coming out next year, they're still making like over a billion dollars a year. Exactly. Yeah. Five. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So, but and Ubisoft is kind of like one of the only other larger uh, publishers that are uh, th that are out there, and yeah. uh, it's it's hard to it's getting harder and harder to be able to make that sustainable. I mean, the fact that like that that we look at 21,000 employees today uh, like if it was a couple of years ago it'd be like oh yeah no that makes sense cuz it's their large company they kind of need to have that but like nowadays it's like 
Whoa, that's uh, that's a uh, that's a, maybe uh, a lot too many. Um, just, yeah, for, just, yeah. just to compare produce. that too is like twenty one thousand employees, approximately, and Nintendo's about seven thousand. Right, it's, nuts. it's nuts. right. That's All of nuts. Nintendo is about seven thousand. So, and they crank out a new game every month through Pretty partnership. Much almost, through yeah. So, I I mean, it's just times are changing a little bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the next story is Hi-Fi Rush it, 2. It could be an open world game. Um, in a recent up interview from Games, uh, from, this is from Games Radar, but then there's like, a in there's like an interview in the interview, the in in Inception interview here uh, from Games Radar Biz. I knew uh, Tango was working on Hi-Fi Rush 2 when we started talking, says Crafton, head of corporate development, uh, Maria Park. We thought we could carry on the legacy and, and offer more creative ways to keep the keep the game updated. I think the the build of that were the build that we looked looked at six months ago, uh, when when we went to meet them, uh, when we meet we went to meet when we went to meet them. Sorry, she continues. Uh, she also notes that Tangle is also uh, creating a fresh even within content crafting. Uh, didn't want to push too far when no negotiating with Microsoft. So that game is pretty much dead dead in, dead oh, in the water done. now. Since, yeah. yeah, and um and since Microsoft both owns even within and Ghostwire. Uh, so if you're wondering what's going on with, with those two franchises, uh, the fr uh, those franchises fr those franchises might be on ice for now, but Crafted at least seems confident about broadening the Hi-Fi Rush Legacy sequel. Our key pillar are innovate innovation, creativity, and scale, uh, scale up. Park says, mm -hmm. but Tangle will operate with some autom um, autonomy, autonomy. Autonomy, thank you, <laughs> and and, yep. and already using the independence to deliver what seems like a Hi-Fi Rush two. Tangle wants to make uh, sure Hi-Fi Rush surpasses expectations. Mark says, "I don't think uh, it's going to completely. It's, it's going completely open world, but more dynamic environments to, uh, that you play in. Do you see? Uh, you want this? I, I found what Hyper -Hi Rush was was fine, but do you want it like a Ubisoft style of Hyper -Hi Rush? No, style? no. Yeah. I think the way this reads though is that it's going to be something on the the level of potentially like the God of War games, where you kind of have like a hub world, a hub yeah. area. Okay. Yeah, um, that, I see that too. Yeah, or like yeah. the like these levels that are still like." kind of like have their own beginning middle and end but they're a little more like open in terms of like mm -hmm. exploration um rather than just a straight line um but yeah i mean it's it's awesome to hear that we're still going to get more hi-fi rush but man it was depressing reading that article and being like they were working on something for evil within to that ain't happening anymore. That ain't happening anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, especially was six, under especially like six while, months though. into Hi-Fi Rush, like six months already developed. Yeah. The the last That's quite a lot. apparently was six months old for Hi-Fi Rush Two. I mean, it's yeah. it's one of those games that isn't like they're not going for this massive scale. They're not trying to create these like insane triple A sized games, right? They want Hi-Fi Rush to be like a bite sized, really fun experience. That's what the first game was. Um, and that's why I think it got such a cult following and why so many people were really upset uh, about what happened to, uh, to to Tango. But it's it's great. They're they're still going to end up making it happen. They're still probably going to end up releasing that game. I wonder, were, would they have been able to pull those assets for that over? Like that six-month-old build, is that something they, continue, they can continue to work I on? I would assume that would be part yeah. of the deal. It, okay. it depends. I don't yeah. see why not. If they own the IP, I would think that's Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, so I guess it'll be interesting to see when we end up getting a Hi-Fi Rush 2 because for a six-month-old build, if it's not going to be that big of a game, who knows visually what kind of upgrades they, they can really add to something like that. Um, maybe even in the next two years we yeah. can end up seeing that game if they get yeah, this game two shot. back uh i can imagine that it probably could be relatively quicker because they've already worked they've already created the game they've already got all the assets in the, right. in the engine so it's just basically it's just expanding out from there i mean that's kind of why i mean when we look at like what ghost of yote uh essentially like that that's using the same engine as uh, as the first right. game and they're able to kind of create that within a couple of years and even make it look even better so yeah. uh i, I think the that like using your own engine or using whatever engine that they've already got and just making a sequel and just expanding on it, it generally can mean that it's a quicker turnaround time um, yeah. than before. Look so. at look at like a dragon, like it's the oh same God, town yeah. constantly. Every year is another game. It's another game, right? And, so, and the playbook of cranking out new games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I think too is like the only thing that can change the scope of it would be like the new budget. So true, like totally. that, that can be a factor too. Like maybe we won't get the true open world, but maybe they're scaling to that with a couple of projects mm -hmm. and trying to be mindful of costs. So 
I mean, all of those things can impact a project. We think on the licensed music part of things. I was, I know, I didn't, I totally forgot the game had licensed music because I, had, yep. I was streaming it, but like, Stream mode, right? I, but then, and the music for that was great as well. So, but like, would they be like, well, we don't really need that. We don't want to cost too much money for that side of things, or? I feel like Maybe. that's kind of the spirit of the game that they would probably follow through on something. I guess it depends on the music, though. Really? Yeah. 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 Do we see? Uh, so, who, okay, if Switch Two. Which, by the way, I see a note here. Switch to announcements this month is happening. That's for sure. Um, <laughs> I'm just—it's in the dock. You should, is it? You should, it's in the dock. I'm just saying. But is it in the spirit? In the spirit of Switch Two, does Hi-Fi Rush One come out? And who owns the rights for that? Is it Xbox though? No, Xbox sold the rights. Just, yeah, they Xbox sold the rights to yeah. the first one. Yeah, for so, the first one. Okay. okay. So it would be Crafton at this point. Crafted, yeah, so yeah. If Crafton want to do work on like a port to the Switch Two. They could. Yeah. Yeah. Theoretically. I think if one we know like there was a exists. Nintendo version coming out, maybe it just oh, wasn't guaranteed. running well. Yeah, you think? Oh my goodness! Well, the, the shirt. What about the, the shirt? shirt right? The shirt. Yeah, yeah the, the shirt. shirt. The shirt. The shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. The Hashtag shirt. Damn it, Riley. Really? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, no, but is the Switch it, Two announcement happening? What's going on here? We've already had this conversation. I am oh. so confident in a Switch 2 yeah. announcement this month. Yeah, I'm, I'm wow. locking it down. Huh? I'm oh lock it in. I actually I'm I'm You're starting to sound happier. like me with Spider-Man DLC there, Steve. I know. I I know. Put <laughs> you. Us two, we're hooked up to the copium machine right now, but you know what? I'm, I can't. I'm, I'm trying to do it. it. No, which way? That. No. No, the other one. No. <laughs> the other way. <laughs> that way. Hey, I'm pointing that way. What? What? <laughs> um no i think i'm just going off of the history of nintendo they announced the original switch in october they've confirmed they're doing it ahead of fiscal uh the, ahead of the end of their fiscal which is march next year um i it just wouldn't surprise me it wouldn't this is a me. man Maybe who not. went this is a man who came from the museum so he knows some stuff i He's didn't get to stuff. go to the museum don't you I lie wish. to us where did you, like, I know you. Then where, where did you, you get it? this riley <laughs> yeah like, where did you, you get have that, that huh? you <laughs> got some explaining to do buddy <laughs> no, it's, it's in your house in your house <laughs> <laughs> explain um the hell you do with my widgets at your house bro <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, here's like it, 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 I don't know because like, I remember hearing wasn't there the rumor that it may not be early 2025 would be the not, like the release date of this that it may be first half of 2025 no it was uh, fiscal it. fiscal yeah. which ends April March 1st. yeah oh, it was March, March. March. I, thought yeah, I heard yeah. that there was something that there was the, there was potentially like it might be delayed or, or something was going to be like it wasn't so like maybe midway through 20 like I mean, I'm sure there were reports but just out of Nintendo's mouth they said by the end of fiscal year we're going to have a switch to or a switch successors what so they successor said. yeah okay. Um, okay yeah I think well, too is like like we're getting to a point now where they're inviting devs to their HQ and then they're po the devs are posting about it online like we and mass production People, started the skew the skew yeah. yeah there was a leak that, that you know uh digital foundries like we believe this is legitimate right. like yeah yeah i think we're getting to a point now where it's like if you don't pull the curtain back someone else is going to do it for you true if, if they so. haven't already <laughs> yeah, yeah right. on a lot of stuff right like, like stuff like that like you're gonna want to like you're gonna have marketing materials to start to trickle out and stuff like that that then get like reveal more than you probably want out there right now and all you really have to do is be like exactly like the switch reveal just be like hey look at this console it oh my gosh it runs you know a sea of thieves and it does this and it runs well, that. why would you pick like, why would you pick that game i feel like it's a i feel like it's kind of a tank the water Remember, mechanics in that game i yeah, can see that that's good I see yeah, that, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it, like it, Baldur's gate you know stuff like that there like, you go that's yeah, 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 that, yeah. yeah. spider-man 2 no. oh no, no. it runs oh, spider-man oh, 2 oh, dlc oh, so yeah, that's how they the game. Nintendo, <laughs> what is nintendo's like uh of like fall into holiday looking like now that echoes of wisdom is out jamboree like, baby jamboree, oh, we're gonna mario okay, party right. mario and luigi brothership yeah. Brothers okay that's right. that's I, I, I just that was 2025 and and not to not to retread too much because we talked about this in a couple episodes ago but i feel like with echoes now out you got the museum opening up 
today as the time this uh, goes live. And oh, the yeah. new Switch Lite as well. New Switch, new Lite. Switch Lite is there. It just feels like it's, there's like a, an upward trend of like really great PR for Nintendo. Capitalize that and like you, maybe even this week, maybe next week and just say, listen, here's the Switch. We'll see you next year. And that's all you have to say. And people will be a buzz this holiday season. Yeah. Like, Holy shit. It's actually coming. Better save my pennies now. It's going to be great. And- uh, that's the only thing I'm kind of holding off on because I'm like, then that probably might hold people off from buying a Switch, uh, which could like holiday. No, holidays have always been a big year yeah, for, for Nintendo. But I, th- I, mean, I think too is like like tail end, like and it's just the exact same holding pattern they did for the Switch reveal, where they that's, just that's what I was going to be like, in October. Yeah. You know, they may have undercut the Wii U holiday movement a little bit, but maybe it's already kind of slowing down. It so was, it's like yeah, that, that was save your money. Like they they won. The other the other down. thing is they're going to want to avoid at all costs a Wii to Wii U scenario. So they have to start talking about this ahead of time. If they're yeah, going to come out yeah. by yeah. by March, they have to explain to millions of people whether or not they want to hold out for a Switch this holiday or not. They have to talk to millions of people and say this is not a, a, an upgrade. This is a new console. This isn't just a Switch XL or something like that. You're getting a whole new experience and that's going to be so important because otherwise yes. people are just going to be like, well, it's a Wii U again and I'm not going to I'm not going to pay for this because I don't understand what this console is. I'm still the naming out hope that it, I, oh, I will yeah. Yeah. In general, like, regardless, <laughs> regardless of how much they want to pump out and market and try and convince people like this isn't the wii u situation just off of the look of it right like it, a mm-hmm. lot of people are going to immediately think oh it's just another switch yeah so totally. I, I but i really you know all we've really seen in terms of like these leaks or whatever has popped out there it is just like a render that you would 3d print or something you know what i mean like we don't know what the joy cons look like people we don't have know. 3D printed, <laughs> yeah so. oh are they really <laughs> yeah that's crazy oh, um <laughs> unbelievable (laughs) um but i i wonder like you know in terms of like actual design when you see it fully unveiled what does that look like if it's gonna get docked like the switch what's the dock look like right like that that's the sort of thing like things like that could help create just a, a a new look for it that could feel different enough for consumers to be like okay this is a brand new thing I'm still holding out hope that it's going to be called the Super Nintendo Switch. I really want it to be that. It, it that just seems great. like a, a would perfect be game. Would be smart. Uh, good. Switch I, I, Cube. I mean, no. what, what are their <laughs> the 3DS was like new Nintendo 3DS? Uh, yeah, like that's Nintendo the thing I don't Switch. want them. Like, yeah. Nintendo, we don't need that weird, like, new uh, 3DS XL, like, or whatever. Or Honestly, just the 64. The hey, my, no. this... Switch 64. Switch 64, oh god. Um Switch Rage or something like that, you know? I just I just hope they avoid any any room for confusion. Just give us a two. Just give us a two. Hold on. I just had I just had a thought. Okay, because I was like thinking I'm like, why would they why would they kind of cannibalize uh the holidays for the for Nintendo? What if they announce it in October and then pre-orders in November? that's enough to be able to like get them into the holidays and and basically like and get their fiscal end of that fiscal being that's like that's a crazy idea and i would be behind it i, w- I would love Copium. that for me yeah, yeah i would love that i would love to have that revenue in this if it's yeah, if it's going to be, be released great. before april oh, yeah, you yeah, got to get their yeah. pre-orders in pretty much like as soon as possible i would imagine my my, my gut tells me that if they operate like the switch launch they'll have like a very light tease they might not even say the name of the console sure show it off and then be like look forward to a formal presentation in january and then i, I, I oh, guarantee, that's, gonna be after, I guarantee yeah. that's what's gonna happen i i I, I feel strongly about that at any moment we could wake up and nintendo would be like hey we just dropped a, a five or even like a two minute direct here's the silhouette of the switch Two. see you next year mm, like, it, it, knowing, it knowing them like, they're gonna announce the- it they're gonna announce it during our thanksgiving weekend well, what, oh, wasn't they going to announce them once I'm on a flight them, somewhere? Knowing, that, yeah. knowing my yeah. luck, it'll, I'll be on a flight somewhere, and then they'll announce it. Where are you going what in was, March? What was the original one? <laughs> what was the original one? <laughs> yeah, like, where, like, where are you going January, this January, Caboose? Where are you going this month, Caboose? You going anywhere? <laughs> nowhere, nowhere. <laughs> you know, we're going to ship, ship you somewhere. <laughs> hey, hey. hey. It's like, now I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite. We need this announcement right now. I think the Switch, you know what? I'm going to put a date on it. Because March 3rd, 2017. That was a Friday, March seventh. 
Is the release? You go March seventh for the release date. You're going March the to, release wow. date. You know what, I'm Marcel? Saying, I'm right there with you. That's a fair. Let's do it. Get that in there. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Lock, lock it in. Lock it in. You know what? Spider Man DLC game awards. Lock it in. Like. No, here's what I'm. Here's what I'm. Oh no. I'm saying. I'm saying probably like March 25th or 27th release date. So either Tuesday or Thursday. Wow. I'm gonna go. I'm. I'm gonna go a little further. I think like a May. Oh, you, get out of your I mind! Was, you think it's gonna be May? That's how they're physical. That's how they're physical. I know. Well, yeah, but Riley, 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 Riley knows more. Just, he's throwing our scent off. No, oh, no, no, I'm not. no, I'm not. Oh, no, 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 they kind of laid out their like commitment to investors for the entire fiscal, like publicly, and it didn't involve a new oh, console the, by physical. the end of March. Nah. No, they just said they'd announce it by the end of this fiscal. No, no. no they didn't I'm their sorry. their fiscal like their earnings reports or projections didn't include like a new console launch. But I think like like May would make sense. May or June. See, I, why I was saying, you guys, you, what the fuck? I'm thinking, I'm thinking <laughs> May or nah, June, maybe nah, nah, actually. It's not gonna be <laughs> mid, to, like it's not gonna be mid 2025. It's gonna be before fiscal, and uh, and now I, what? What the fuck? Marcel uh, holds strong. I'm, hold strong I'm, I'm holding me. tight, yeah. man. I'm totally. This, tight. Is a, this feels like it might uh, be a drink. Bet. I think oh, it's not. Oh, I think there's no there's way. I don't know. Drink. I've been Uh-oh. losing a lot of drink Ryan bets lately. Mark. I'm just like, I don't know if I'm ready for losing another we one. Guys, I might, I might be hammered right now. <laughs> now. We, are, we are rehashing so much content right now from two weeks ago. Like, this exact conversation <laughs> happened. You already have to think about Camille when the announcement's going to happen. October. Do, you, do we all agree with that though? October is the announcement. I feel like I feel like end. yeah. They, I feel like they they skip the September there. direct yeah, for a reason. Go. So I think that would in. probably do for something from them. Unless the they are going to hold off until the game awards. They're they're not they've been Jeff. skipping Jeff doesn't, awards do, Jeff doesn't yeah. deserve that. No way they can hold no. off. But yeah. maybe this no way take their time to be like, hey, okay, you know what? And also Nintendo. No. Nintendo historically hasn't been at the Game Awards since Breath of the Wild with anything of like substance aside from well, that, yeah, that, like a smash that announcement. That a smash and bit and bayonetta. One of the biggest, biggest hits. Like I'm just, you know, I can have a good relationship with with Jeff Keighley now. No, Dubs not that good. There. Not that no. good. <laughs> there the Game Awards. No, he shows too much love for PlayStation. Forget it. We see all the tweets. <laughs> wow wow okay we see him. Get it. i would say them, I, Jeff. that's my guess i don't know i just like i just like looking at their old models and be like they did that they did that they yeah did that, that is a silly yeah. guess history tends works at a retailer itself. yeah mm-hmm. just a silly little guess <laughs> well, no, no, silly. it's not, not confirming it it's just guessing no, i know mm. okay all right we'll see well with that being said steve porter bridges what's going on for the rest of the week I'm just hanging out playing uh, the new Starfield DLC, Shattered Space. I went back Ooh, trying to mm-hmm. go through that. A little spooky vibes, you know, dealing with space ghosts. Kind of cool. Uh, and then, yeah, just playing through uh, Death Stranding, getting ready for the Diablo expansion. Lots to play right now. Yeah. And then, uh, then you can't forget about uh, Alan Wake soon as well. Well, I don't. I, I couldn't. I'm excited. I couldn't. I'm excited. on my arm now. I mean, tattooed. I'm tattooed. Yeah. tattooed there. Yeah, it's locked in. Yep. Riley, how about yourself? Um, not too much. Just uh, kind of. I'm my sleep schedule is still botched. Like it's so bad. <laughs> oh yeah, I have been staying up to like three thirty a.m. every night. I Oof. just cannot sleep. Damn, don't know why. But uh, it's probably gonna work on that. And then uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe play some NHL twenty five, which I oh yeah. Oh so, okay okay okay. I'm dabbling with that. I need to, I need to dive into that. See how. I know they revamped the whole GM mode and everything, so I need to see how they deal with that. Anyway, it's Steve cool. Stranding, to, yeah, uh, Steve Stranding to photo mode. <laughs> uh, actually, <laughs> I've been uh, I've been diving back into Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, I was uh, I was oh hell yeah. like, after the, that pr- reveal uh, last week. I was like, yeah, I think it's I think it's time to kind of jump back into it again. And uh, man, oh man, what a what a game that is! What uh, a game it is. <laughs> yeah, so I'm um, and I've actually been playing it on my Steam Deck of all things, uh, oh, nice. and uh, it still looks pretty good on that. Although, again, I'm still having problems with my Steam Deck. 
I, I think I've narrowed down what the like not at least what I'm noticing is the issue. After about it's not like an ally X. Oh, well, sorry. Not true. But after about an hour, <laughs> there you go. Um, after about an hour of playing, it like I would I would go from like 40 frames like consistently because I have it at a hard cap at that, literally down to three frames. Like Ooh. it would slow to a crawl. And I and I, I started like putting up the 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 in the system info on the screen so I can kind of yep. keep an eye on everything. <clears throat> when that happens, basically the CPU and the GPU power like goes down to almost nothing. And it's like GPU at a hundred percent. And then when it finally gives like when finally the GPU gets a little bit of extra like wattage power, then the frame rate kind of jumps back up again. So I, I don't know what's going on with it. I, I don't know whether my 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 Steam Deck is broken. It, but I, it's too late to be able to send in for like replacement because it's way past its year warranty and uh and they I don't gotcha. Know. They want you to buy a new one. I can't I can't afford to replace it right now. I just it, it's because I'd rather get the LIX, to be honest. Because I need the battery Al- life, man. The well, LIX better, would never do that. Battery life is killing Ally- me. The LIX would never do that to would you. Never do that to you. Uh, would treat you well. Right. My, we don't. anyway. That's, that's, <laughs> you don't know that, Riley. And uh, I don't know I'm why. Trying Installing Bellatro. <laughs> what was Bellatro. that? What was that? I'm trying. To, that? I'm trying to stay away from installing Bellatro on my phone. I'm. I'm oh, trying. I'm, holding, I'm holding off the urge. Don't do it. I think you, should, you should download you should on your do TV. It. Why would I download on my TV? Oh, because it's on the App Store, right? Mm-hmm. Damn. Steve, yeah. Download it on Set every it so device. Funny. Every device. Every device. I don't. I don't yeah. need. I don't if need a smart that in my fridge, life right Download now. it there too. You, I, 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 feel I like don't you need do, that though. in my life. I'm busy. I feel like you do, though. You could I be like me that. and just play Marvel Snap instead. <laughs> See, now, now we're talking. See, that's also addictive and, and dangerous. Pokemon TCG Pocket comes out pretty soon, too. Oh, fuck. And that right. looks legit. Now nah, I'm, I'm going to install MTG game. Arena. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, the, <laughs> great idea. Want. Imagine the Gathering Arena. That's what I want to do. MTG. Hey, Boos, how about you, my man? How you doing? Not much, you know what? Like I said, I just replayed through Horizon Forbidden West. I'm mean, kind of on mm-hmm. a PlayStation binge. I might re revisit Death Stranding because uh after the talk today, too, you know, Steve Sailor or sorry, Steve Avar, he kind of kind of got me a little convinced that maybe I uh I need to jump back in. But wow, that's it. I'm playing all the episodes for Camille not to be on. Right I know, now. right? <laughs> no um, one tell her. No one tell no her. One <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then if Caboose just, like has a change of heart, he just comes on. He's like, man, De- I've been playing Death Stranding. It's incredible. Caboose, like, if by the end of the year you can get the Death Stranding Platinum, that would be the funniest <gasps> prank and in the world. And she doesn't know. Oh my God. I think, I think we got to make sure that we coordinate that it's on the episode that Camille is not here for. Of course. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no but that's it. And then I'm playing a lot more of the uh, the the DLC for Mortal Kombat One. I've been having a ton of fun with that. So, yeah. did you try the story mode yet, or? No, actually, I, I got to do that. I don't know why. I haven't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I'll get on you that. Let me, eventually. You, let me, you let me know how you like it. That's what I'm Ooh, gonna say. That's what, that you let me know how you like it. A lot of. Uh, I don't want to influence you. Want, so you, it's one of the worst things you've ever played in your entire life. Let's just say Tekken is better, and I that and that one oh, wow. was shorter. That, okay. one, that one, that one was insane. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, 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 Hajima, uh, what his name is? Hajima. Shima yeah. guy he just huh? came out. Who the, who's the who's the, the one who was always fighting? Is for... making me confused about how it's said now. <laughs> is it Hajima? 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 Mishima? Stop. We got, we got oh, so Stop, it. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. No, no, no it's that guy. That? I played last night. Anyway, he like that DLC was pretty dope. He's available right now if you have early access. So for uh Tekken 8. Himishima? Himishima? Yeah. Is it was that. <laughs> That one, googling it. That one. Anyway, uh, I'm actually I was playing on diving back into Death Stranding as well. So uh, because oh. I only reached a certain point, and I was like, "All right, I'll come back to this." And then it's been like years now. So Kazuya Mishima. No, hmm. his father. That's his father has the same last name. No, with the father's first name. Oh my god. Taijima. <laughs> It's Hajima. It is Jin. What are Jin? we doing here? <laughs> There's Jin, but his last, he has a different there's, last name. Because he's like Jin, a bastard child. There's Zuya, and then there's Hajima, and then there's like Gimpachi, who's that like is, grandfather. It's Hayachi, is who you're talking about. That's the guy I'm in. Yeah, whatever. I can remember. You're so name. far off, dude. What? 
Bro, how what are we far? doing? What are what we are doing? doing? I have no idea what's going on. What has happened? happened? What Hayashi has happened? Mishima. Whatever. Come on, that man. Guy. Just play the DLC of that. It's it's great. Come on. Mm-hmm. Come on. Anyway, that's all I've got for you guys. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We'll see you with Nintendo announcement next week, everyone. All right. Bye. I hope. <laughs>